Hello everyone and welcome to Engineering IRL where you learn how to improve as an engineer and apply the engineering mindset to real life. So today's episode I think will be pretty cool. So what we're going to talk about is how, what's the fastest way to level up your technical prowess? Okay, what's the fastest way to level up your technical prowess? Now, <clears throat> The thing is, when you start out in an engineering field, and even if you're not an engineer, this is all field, there's, there's, a te- there's technical skills deep-seated into industry, into whatever industry you're working in, that only comes from being in that industry. Just based knowledge. You don't, you don't learn it in university, you don't learn it online, you don't learn it anywhere for, except from the actual experience of understanding that industry. This is why, in, in many cases, people become experts over time. Just on pure time. They might not be that smart, but all, based on pure time, you have the most experience in this industry. You know the lingo, you know how to get the respect of the people in the industry, and you, uh, just from knowing different people and the things that you've been through. So by default, experience in terms of time is, is a huge factor. Um, additionally, Obviously, not everyone needs to be uh, to have the same. Like you don't need to have been there for ten years to therefore have X amount of experience and skills, right? This is why early on in, in your career, for for me, anyways, I think it's extremely important to to get as much knowledge and expand, like go wide, don't go narrow. But the there's there's pros and cons of both so i'm not saying don't go wide or you won't be successful it's more that there are pros and cons of each going narrow i.e being really specialized in understanding one as, uh, facet of your business or industry has its advantages because you can quickly become the expert the professional the, you 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 know you're, you're the highly skilled professional in that specific thing it can warrant high pay because you know that thing so well that no one else can to the level that no one else can or a little a uh, few amount of people do so that's the advantage there the only problem with that is early on you don't know if that's the thing that you're going to be the pro at or that it's worth sometimes the money makes it worth it but a lot of times not this is why wider is better because two advantages you can quickly find out for a specific topic that you do want to go uh, deep on but also you just become a uh, you become, you know enough about every other industry, you can relate to everyone in the industry because you've done the work that they've done. Now, I don't mean you spend a few weeks doing this and you talk to guys in sales and all of a sudden you get how the sales work. I mean like work in it, like do the actual job that they do, the everyday stuff, not the glamorous closing a sale. I'm talking about the follow-up. Like if you're if you're a technical guy and you want to say, oh, you know, I, I did the sales stuff, like, you need to be going out, you need to be doing the little things that they do, the boring stuff. Do the boring stuff of the other roles and jobs um, before you say like, oh yeah, I used to be in that. Before you've gained, to me, that's where you really gain the experience. It's in the nitty gritty stuff of whatever facet it is. Cool, so thanks, but how do I quickly learn this like I don't have time to spend a year doing an area that has nothing to do with what I what I really want to do look if you really know what you really want to do then you should triple that you should focus on that and do that obviously that's fine cool but here's where you will start to get some lessons from this is that even for that mindset or if you're going as wide as possible like what I'm suggesting to level up your knowledge the fastest very simply you need to be dumb in that area you always get told empty your cup you know like say say all the knowledge that you hold about a topic your head is a cup with water and if you know if your cup is full if the water if you know a cup of water is full and you pour more water into it water comes out like there's no additional knowledge gained because your your brain's already full there's no net gain of water i.e. no net gain of knowledge if you already know everything. 
okay so it's, it's a cool place to get to you want to get to the point where you're the expert you know everything you know every answer but it also means if you know every answer then there's no new knowledge coming in and that sucks I would have been uh, stressing this throughout the podcast but really like you want to learn you want to maximize what you learn throughout the whole thing not just in when you're a young engineer you want to learn you always want to learn as much as possible learn something every day all that cliche stuff cool um but empty your cup like don't even just empty your cup don't be like hey i i i I learned this topic fast because i'm gonna sit there and listen like you're a dumbass like you don't know anything that's the kind of dumb because okay there's don't get me wrong here there's a line like if you do a training say you get sent to a training for a thing you know someone is sending you you go to a training where you have to sit there and learn how to send an email or post a Facebook status. Unless you're, you know, at a certain older age, I don't think you need to sit there for a four hour training for this. For Let's say it's a whole day training on how to post a social media status. Like the technical low level of that, not what to type, but how to. <coughs> No one wants to sit through that. No one. So I'm not saying, um, I'm not saying that you want to seek out learning shit you already know. But I am saying that even in those scenarios, if you want to learn really about posting, you go into that thing. You don't say I already know all this stuff. You will guarantee learn zero. You go in there, uh, fresh, know nothing. Whatever your whatever lesson or journey you're taking on. I'm there and you will you might <laughs> 1% chance you might learn something okay now this is talking about a mundane thing that you know supposedly everyone knows how to do but expand that expand that extrapolate that further to bigger topics more technical topics maybe something you're intermediate in you think you're the best you're really intermediate if you can empty your cup and be a noob in it when you come to a new situation someone's trying to teach you something even if they're below you you can learn something from the opposite perspective and I can tell you try like time and time again if you don't know something you'll learn you'll learn it faster so let go of your pride of I am the best at this I am a X grade student I am a you know this level of smartness be a dumbass for a bit you learn so much okay that is that is the key that is the baseline of the fastest way to learn stuff so let me tie it in a little bit further because we're talking about technical knowledge technical knowledge this will be the basis for the whole lot but technical knowledge so for any given topic you want to apply that principle to all of these learnings when you learn something new technical <clears throat> someone talks to you about hey uh, latest uh, blockchain or they want to talk about AI or VR I'm going with that as the latest tech of what this year like 2018 like that's the new kind of thing sure fastest way isn't to be like oh yeah yeah, I know about how that works no like how does that work ask find out cool you've had this conversation you go away and you're like okay shit I need to learn what the hell this blockchain thing is because everyone's talking about it you always know that you can learn from um, they, they talk about how you can learn um, was it a uh, 70 20 10 10 percent reading about it 20 percent is when like you get taught it 80 70 percent from doing <clears throat> you want to that that's pretty much true that's pretty much true like you you should read about it you know go to your Google like instantly Google what is blockchain cool and what I want you to do is when you, for example, what is a blockchain? What is blockchain? What blockchain is? Fine. But I want you to instantly, okay, this is, for example, if you're a Windows user, like instantly you type in, this is how you should do all your future searches, by the way. Instantly you type in what is blockchain, what you're searching about, and skip the first two links that are ads, and then middle click like eight articles, like the first eight things that seem relevant. To explaining it to you the ones that can do it bite-sized don't sit there and click on a link read through it a bit go back no 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 read all the do the title reading 
do all the title reading, middle click, middle click, middle click. So new tab, new tab, new tab, open like eight things. And then click through those and then try absorb them. Like read it a little bit. If it's not clicking for you, you can close it. Like if, you're, if it's reading in a way that just makes, that buzzes it over your head, close, next tab, close, next tab, close. Now, what you're gonna do is, when, you, <clears throat> when you're learning on a new topic, the thing is, this is how memory works. It attaches, and this is how your brain works, well, from studies and just from knowing, your brain associates things with knowledge you already have. Okay, so you wanna maximize that thing. So this is why I say when you read it, you can read something deep and not know a subject at all and you have to go through the whole thing to start to get it. So if you want to quickly get something, you read, okay? You, what you look for, what you're looking for is other, like, a, uh, two things. One, key words that become the vernacular of that technology. So when they talk about blockchain, they go talk about cryptocurrencies. So you're like, okay, cryptocurrencies, look up that, do the same middle click thing. Cryptography, okay, middle click. do all that. <clears throat> so you want to understand the terms around it. Decentralized, okay, cool. And, and repeat this process. So the first thing is you're understanding what are the words and, and, and those words become less big once you kind of associate it with a smaller thing. This is all you're doing. You're trying to find associations and clues. Then what you're also doing is um, trying to find a new question because you're asking what is black blockchain blindly you don't like when I did the podcast about um, solve it, problem solving you should go back and listen to that one because I'll refer to it a lot step one is identify the problem <clears throat> you need to re you need to go back and ask a more specific question your goal is to find what's your next question that I can relate it to what is blockchain? Then some article goes, hey, you know, this is a revolutionary thing where it does decentral is a decentralized cryptocurrency below on a ledger that da 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 da. And then you might expand and talk about the history of like what the problem it's trying to solve. Um, and they talk about trust. Okay. So now you're expanding your your question. You're like, you may ask, why do we care about that? Or you might ask, where has this been proven? Or you might ask, what are examples of it? Now your question is becoming purposeful. Okay, a lot of people get stuck at what is this? They read deep into this topic and go, I don't know what it is really, to be honest. Some people do. Okay, fine. All right, genius, relax. <clears throat> but you can do this for any topic. You need to initially, uh, like, just straight up Google what is it, then expand your uh, vernacular, your understanding that you, the terminology of the technology you're learning about. Because trust me, every technology uses acronyms, things get used loosely because they're similar terms in another technology, but they don't mean the exact same thing, but some dude decided to use it because he assumes everyone knows it. Like if I said to you, WYSIWYG right now, I can't even name a percentage. I reckon, I reckon 30% of you would instantly know what that is. But it's a common term. It's a surprisingly common term. And you would think that is a terrible acronym and no one would say WYSIWYG. But look it up and you'll see in the future when you're trying to describe like a, a technology, this is the WYSIWYG editor for that technology. It kind of makes sense. It's a WYSIWYG thing. All right, cool. <coughs> W-Y-S-I-W-G. Okay. Anyway, so back to the summary. You're, you're, you, you absorb uh, the, 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 the key terms. You understand the lingo of the people. It's like, you, you know, you want to learn a new language. You go, you want to learn a new culture. You go there, you see how they speak. Okay. Then some of these big words become less big words. Then reframe your question. As you read bits and pieces, reframe your question. On that new question, do the same step. You'll start quickly filtering. You can close a lot of tabs that are relevant or you've read it before or you get it. And you keep doing that because you eventually can start to relate it to something you already know. This is why I like to use analogies a lot. It's super powerful because you are relating it to knowledge you already have, something you already understand. And even though it's not exactly it, even though it's not exactly the same thing, what you're doing is you're associating what you understand with something you already know. And then once that becomes a thing you already know, this new bit of knowledge, 
you can go further up the chain of that technology and understand it more, Tech, more technically. You can go deeper now, because now you understand the basics. You stand in the vernacular, you understand some of the problems, you understand some examples. Then you can look at from one example to the next example. Here is uh, Ethereum, here is EOS. What do they solve? How is it similar to the other one? What's the differences? Now you're really starting to understand the top. Then when you get into the real next level, <clears throat> explain it to someone else. Yo, I learned about cryptocurrency. Did you know that it's this? Or someone mentions one, you can be like, oh, okay, that's kind of like this other base technology, uh, this other cryptocurrency that I know of, or this other application that this other company is doing. Boom, you're becoming more versed. You're understanding the actual implications and what it is. You're understanding the thing. Cool, good. Now I can have conversations about it, happy. <clears throat> Next, and this is the hardest step. And this is not always necessary, honestly. Like when I talked about going wide, if you really want to say, I start to know it, you need to do this last step to really know it. But you can go, you can go the first two steps that I just said to, uh, to, to, have a, to get what I call the base understanding. <clears throat> oh, sorry, you have a base understanding, then you have a little bit extra. You've gone a little bit technical with it now. When you're just saying, what is crypto? That's your base understanding. Once you've gone a little bit deeper and gone to the examples and can talk to so teach someone else about it, then you're at that... Um, You've gone from base knowledge to you've got some base technical technical knowledge but then to say like you're 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 experienced in it you're a crypto person or whatever you need to do and this could mean two things for a technical person this could be hey i bought some and i understand the system and i've been a user so that's doing that's cool from a user perspective but if you're listening to this you're probably more on the you need to go in especially if you're a software dude, like you need to go in and then look at a code base, fork it. You don't know what that means, we can talk about that later, but fork it and try to make your own crypto. Huh. Now you're becoming a technical expert. <clears throat> now you have a new question. How do I write, how do I create my own blockchain? How do I make my own cryptocurrency? New question, boom, middle click, da 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 da. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Now you're an experienced guy that's tried to actually implement your own currency. You've been doing it for a while. Now you're getting the time factor from when you were first researching it to actually doing stuff. And then as you're doing stuff, <clears throat> in this scenario, it's kind of like new tech. So, you know, it's a little bit different, but <clears throat> as you start doing it, and you do it for longer, you can talk about it, everything. Now you're becoming an expert in it. Now you're talking a technical knowledge of people that actually do this for a living and you just did this as a side thing to learn about a topic. Boom. Your technical knowledge increased so much on a topic that's like nothing to do with your job. Apply this to your job. Honestly. Honestly. Even stuff slightly related. Every topic I want you from now on, like go in, you search, click, 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 click. Also, don't be afraid to go straight to images and get what when 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 someone says this keyword, what's the image that they have? Sometimes useful, sometimes it's not, but it's nice to get a nice image. Um, and then obviously you can watch videos and stuff, but <clears throat> those are um, useful summary videos and things, and then technical ones and do tutorials. That's you going deep on the topic because you got the interest. But I'm talking about getting some base knowledge quickly to the point where you can talk about it and have interest, and you pose your questions. Then if you really want to specialize in it and be the guy for it, then you do those tutorials, then you go deeper that way. Okay, you don't need to go, like I find if you think you need to do a tutorial of this thing to learn it straight away, it takes longer, that's all I'm saying. Okay, and that's it, you have the secret. Middle click, do multiple tabs at once, search initially keyword, learn language, search those keywords, apply same technique, Get to the point where you're doing examples of the technology that you're understanding and start relating it to things you understand. Understand how to start making um, metaphors for the thing that you're trying to understand. So a ledger, a list, a notebook. Everyone understands a notebook. Everyone writes down, I spent $10 today. Cool. Everyone can understand writing things down. Like build and then build that. Build that cyclically, like iterations over and over again. That's how you learn quickly on any technical field okay it's the fastest way 
So with that being said, hopefully you get some sort of value from this. Like always, I'm just trying to uh, share, share some knowledge and help you be to, to, to learn faster and to do things like this. If you're a newbie engineer, it's appreciated when you come in day one, I know nothing, so I'm ready to learn as much as you say. In the background, I'm gonna look up all this stuff that was talked about keywords today that I didn't really get build up my base knowledge from there so I can have the conversation with you, person Y that's teaching me this stuff, and then keep building it. You will accelerate as an engineer like the fastest this way. Guaranteed. All right, and it'll be appreciated by everyone around you. Um, and and it's just, it's just you remember, I talk about learning how to learn. You want to learn as fast as possible. <clears throat> this is the way. So. If you have any other ways that you do, that you learn technical stuff really quickly, let me know. Let's have a conversation. It's kind of, I always find this type of shit really interesting because it's, it's one thing that anyone can, well, not anyone, but anyone can specialize in a specific topic and level up their knowledge that way. But to be able to have some strong technical experience behind multiple of these areas, is really a big advantage. It's really something else. It's been a lot of fun. All right, so good luck with all your future endeavors. That ends this segment. Remember, just go to sariodev.com if you uh, have any feedback or anything like that. And uh, on to the next one, thanks.